The Three Kingdoms was a defining period in Chinese history, considered by some historians as the Dark Ages in China. There were enormous conflicts, wars, and political turbulence between 220 and 280 AD. This historical stage was so named because the three main kingdoms emerged after the collapse of the Han Dynasty, each controlling part of China and conflicting for the country's total domination. The Han Dynasty represented one of the longest and most stable periods in Chinese history, ruling the country for over 400 years. By the end of the 2nd century AD, the dynasty began to face internal and external problems. Widespread corruption, weak administration, oppression, and social inequality led to popular uprisings and riots. Moreover, the increasing power of regional warlords and the growing influence of eunuchs at the imperial court further weakened the centralized government. In 184, two major Taoist rebellions emerged, the Yellow Turban Rebellion and Wei of the Five Pecks of Rice. To combat these movements, Emperor Ling gave military commanders full control of the provinces under his sway. However, this caused an extensive power struggle, as military commanders aimed to expand their own territories. In 189, Emperor Ling died and was succeeded by his 13-year-old son, Liu Bin, later known as Emperor Shao. Due to Emperor Shao's young age, the throne was assumed by a regent, his maternal uncle and grand marshal, He Jin, who became the most powerful official in the Chinese court. He Jin wanted to exterminate the Ten Attendants, a group of influential eunuch officials who had battalions of private soldiers. He Jin summoned General Dong Zhuo to march on the imperial city and wipe out the eunuch faction, but the plot was discovered by the eunuchs and He Jin was killed. In response, Emperor Shao ordered the indiscriminate killing of all eunuchs. The surviving eunuchs kidnapped and fled with the emperor, but were pursued by Dong Zhuo, preferring to commit suicide rather than be captured by the vindictive general. But, contrary to expectations, Dong Zhuo betrayed the government and fatally poisoned the young Emperor Shao. Dong Zhuo replaced Emperor Shao with his younger half-brother, Liu Xie, who became known as Emperor Xin, the last emperor of the Han Dynasty. Dong Zhuo was eventually assassinated and succeeded by another warlord, the famous Cao Cao, who wanted to unite the Han Empire by defeating the rebellious warlords. When Cao Cao died in 220, Emperor Xian abdicated the throne, claiming that he had failed to perform the duty entrusted by the gods, a Chinese philosophical concept known as the Mandate of Heaven, which purported to justify the lawfulness of rulers according to divine will. With the end of the Han Dynasty, China was divided into smaller kingdoms, each controlled by a powerful and ambitious warlord. The Wei Kingdom, led by Cao Pi, second son of the late Cao Cao, controlled most of northern China. The Shu Kingdom, led by Liu Bei, controlled the southwest, and the Wu Kingdom, led by Sun Quan, controlled the southeast. These three main kingdoms formed the basis for the Three Kingdoms period. The Wei Kingdom, led by Cao Pi, was the most powerful of the three, with a strong army and an organized government. Cao Pi declared himself emperor, founding the Wei Dynasty but his rule was challenged by the other two kingdoms. The Shu Kingdom, led by Liu Bei, was the smallest and weakest of the three kingdoms, yet it was known for its virtue and heroism. Liu Bei was a distant descendant of the Han Dynasty and tried to restore the glory of the dynasty. He formed an alliance with two of the greatest generals of that era, Zhang Fei and Guan Yu, who became sworn brothers. Together, they fought against the Wei Kingdom, but Liu Bei never conquered Luoyang, the capital of the Wei Kingdom, dying in 223 AD. The Wu Kingdom, led by Sun Quan, was the most dynamic and aggressive of the three. Sun Quan expanded his power in southern China, conquering other areas and establishing alliances with multiple warlords such as Liu Bei and Zhuge Liang. In 222 AD, he proclaimed himself King of Wu, and in 229, he rose to the title of Emperor. After Liu Bei's death, Sun Quan consolidated power and expanded his territory, conquering southern China and establishing a strong base in the Yangtze River region. The military alliance formed by Sun Quan and Liu Bei was intended to confront the powerful army of Cao Cao and the Wei Kingdom. The conflict resulted in the famous Battle of Red Cliffs, one of the most well-known and studied battles in history for strategic importance and unexpected events. In the year 208, Cao Cao led his army in a campaign to subdue Sun Quan and his allies. 
he marched toward the Red Cliffs, a strategic area along the Yangtze River where he hoped to achieve a decisive victory against his opponents. But Sun Quan and his allies, including Liu Bei and Zhuge Liang, had prepared an ambush for Cao Cao's troops. They built several dams on the Yangtze River, controlling the flow of the waters and establishing a strong current enough to obstruct the navigation of Cao Cao's ships. When Cao Cao's troops arrived on the scene, they were ambushed. They tried to cross the river in boats, but were hit by a storm that sank much of the fleet. Cao Cao's soldiers, trapped and disorganized, were attacked by Sun Quan's forces and their allies, who were prepared to take advantage of the opportunity. The battle lasted three days, ending with a major victory for Sun Quan and his allies. Cao Cao lost most of his troops and retreated. The Battle of the Red Cliffs was a turning point in Chinese history, as it allowed Sun Quan to consolidate his power in the south of the country and lay the foundation of the founding of the Kingdom of Wu. The military campaigns of this period were so important that, alongside the rulers of the three belligerent dynasties, would emerge great strategists such as Zhuge Liang and Lu Xun, who achieved an almost mythical status in the Chinese canon. Another less glamorous historical record was the devastation caused by the war. If the historical documents are correct, the Three Kingdoms period was the second deadliest war era in history, rivaled only by World War II. Although war was the number one cause, famine and disease, brought on by destabilizing governments, certainly contributed to the high number of fatalities. A population census carried out at the end of the Han Dynasty indicated a population of approximately 50 million people living in China while another population census carried out in the Jin Dynasty, founded in the year 265 after the end of the wars and the reunification of the country, counted only a population of approximately 16 million. The chaos wrought by the battles hampered the economic development of the Three Kingdoms. But there were some technological and scientific breakthroughs, including complex military strategies with the invention of gunpowder for pyrotechnics and firearms. To strengthen the army, smelting and metallurgy improved tremendously in this period. Improvements in other social factors were also significant, such as the invention of the windmill for irrigation, the development of silk in Luoyang and Henan, and the irrigation system and canals in the Shu Kingdom. The Three Kingdoms period is also known for legendary figures, many of them immortalized in Chinese literature and popular culture. For example, the famous warrior Lü Bu, initially under the command of Ding Yuan and Dong Zhuo, two powerful warlords at the time. But Lü Bu turned against the lords and killed them, becoming an autonomous warlord. Lü Bu was later executed by the order of Cao Cao in 199 AD. Another famous warrior of this period was a general named Zhao Yun, a loyal servant of Liu Bei, an important name in his campaigns to try to reunify China. Zhao Yun became known for his bravery at the Battle of Changban in 208, when he led a mission to rescue Liu Bei's adopted son from the enemy army. Zhao Yun rode alone through the enemy troops to rescue the boy. He managed to escape and demonstrated enormous courage and skill on the battlefield. He died in a military campaign against the Kingdom of Wu in the year 229 AD. The Three Kingdoms period fueled many literary works, the best known being The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, a dramatic and fictional representation of historical characters and events. The work portrays the characters as heroes or villains, exaggerating their achievements and personalities in comparison to historical reality. The work is widely read and studied in China and other Mandarin-speaking countries, influencing many forms of art and media, including theater and film. The Three Kingdoms period was a fascinating and tumultuous era in Chinese history, marked by brutal conflicts and political intrigue, but also by creativity and innovation. Legendary figures such as Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Cao Cao continue to nurture the Chinese popular imagination and are celebrated as heroes and villains. The period also established a long-lasting legacy in Chinese culture, politics, and society, influencing the country's history for centuries.